Hi everybody, welcome to tonight's class on a Thai style yellow chicken curry. My name is Carrie. I am City Market's Assistant Outreach and Education Manager and the one who's been sending you all the emails. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's really awesome to be able to have this type of class where even though we can't gather together in person, we can still feel that sense of community with this class. Um, if at any point during the class you have a question, you can type it into the question and answer box and I will feed those to our instructor as, uh, as they fit in the class. We're going to aim for about an hour worth of actual cooking time today, so there's plenty of time for questions. Feel free to put them in at any time during the chat or during the class or at the end if you'd like to ask some questions at the end. Chef Jason's very knowledgeable about any and all things cooking, so even if you have cooking questions that aren't necessarily related to this recipe that we're making tonight, feel free to put those in and I'm sure I'll be happy to answer those for you. Um, I'll be the one sitting behind the camera kind of controlling all that, so you'll hear my voice feeding those questions in during the class. But without further ado, I will turn things over to Chef Jason and let me know if there are questions. Thanks. Hello everyone, I'm Chef Jason and tonight we're gonna do a Thai style, a yellow Thai style coconut curry with a jasmine lime rice. <clears throat> tonight we're gonna start with the rice so we can get that cooking while we start doing all the prep and uh, getting our ingredients together for the Thai curry. Um, First off, I wanted to just say thank you all for joining us and um, wanted to just start talking about getting ready to cook the recipe and to cook any recipe. Um, you may have heard the term mise en place, and that basically means to have everything in its place. Um, and it's a general cooking term you'll hear. <clears throat> so what we want to do and what that means is you want to make sure that you kind of have all your ingredients lined up, um, which, I, which I do. You can't see everything here, but it's, it's all lined up here. Um, and have all your measuring uh, things ready. Read through your recipe. That's one big thing that I tell people is to take your recipe and just read all the way through the recipe before you get started. Um, you never know what you can come across. Sometimes you may want to do something in a different order that the recipe says. Um, a lot of times the recipe will say you want something cooked already or a lime zested or th things like that that you may want to go ahead and, and do. Um, ahead of time. We'll do those things together today, but um, again, it doesn't hurt to just read through it. You know what you're getting into. Um, you may uh, find an ingredient that you want, they can, they'll say in there, sub this if you don't like this, and, and you may want to do that. Like, for example, in this recipe, as we read through, it does say a half cup of cilantro, but I say in here that you can substitute basil or Thai basil because a lot of people don't like cilantro. Um, so those are the types of things that I just wanted to kind of go over before we get started. Um, so without further ado, we will get started. So we're going to go ahead and start the rice. So we have jasmine rice today, and we're just going to do uh, one cup, um, one, excuse me, we're going to do two cups of rice. So we're going to do two cups of rice, and traditionally rice is a uh, regular long grain rice. You're going to do a two to one ratio. With jasmine rice, you do a little less. Um, it's easy, it, it, it cooks, it absorbs a little more, so it, can, it has a tendency to get a little mushier than the white rice would do. So what you're doing is about one and three quarter cup or one and a half cup or so to, to one. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and measure that out and put the water in here and then we'll get the rice going. So in here we got three and a half cups of water. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. We got three and a half cups of water. We we'll turn our burner on medium, and we're going to turn it on like medium high. And we're going to bring this up to a boil before we add the rice. Add the salt to the water, so about one and a half teaspoons of salt. One and a half teaspoons, go right in there, and we're going to let that come up to a boil. We can measure out our rice in the meantime. And I like jasmine rice, it's got a nice floral flavor and we add the lime to it and the lime zest, it just takes it up one more level. Um, 
you know, just a, a different play on rice and something that's easy to add to it where it's not just plain rice. Just gonna grab a bowl real quick. Someone wanted to know if they could use riced cauliflower in this. They yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a, gonna be a different flavor, a little different flavor. You won't have the jasmine, but you can take the cauliflower, mix some lime into it. You're gonna do, um, you know, you're gonna recreate the similar flavor in, in anything that you put cauliflower as a rice substitute. You kind of know what you're getting into anyway. I do that a lot. Sometimes I make uh, chicken pot pie or shepherd's pie, but I use a cauliflower mash on top as opposed to potato. It's really nice. So I understand, you know, substituting that stuff. Um, so yeah, no problem doing that. All right, so two cups. Here we have a question that we talked about earlier. Uh, do you rinse jasmine rice? Looks like you're going straight from the bag. What kind of rice needs to be rinsed? Um, that's kind of a personal preference too. Sometimes I'll rinse it, sometimes I won't. Um, I have found that it doesn't really make much of a difference when I uh, do jasmine rice, because I've done it both ways. And, and honestly, I don't find a big difference. Um, the one thing that I do with jasmine rice that's a little different than some of the rices is I kind of check it a little bit because I do feel like it cooks a little quicker and does have a tendency to overcook. So you'll see me check it once or twice, where a lot of times you'll hear, don't you know, disturb your rice. But again, depending on the burner that you have and how hot or cold it is or how fast it cools down, then uh, you want to just be careful um, because again, you don't want to scorch your rice or obviously have it cook too slow where it gets too mushy. All right, so we're just letting this come up to a boil. While we're doing that, we can go ahead and zest our lime. So um, with the lime, what you want to take most fruit, especially limes and lemons, before you do it, you want to give it a nice roll around. That kind of loosens up the juices in it. We are going to be juicing this later for both dishes. So just roll it around, and you can feel it get a little softer. That'll just loosen up the juice inside. So. That feels good. And we're just going to kind of zest um, the lime. And what we're going to do, if, uh, I didn't, it's not on the front, but we're basically going to add the whole zest of this lime and the whole juice of this lime. So that's why the recipe just says one lime. So we're going to zest this guy. And be careful when you're zesting, you know, this is the pith, the white, and you don't really want to get too much of that in there. It's bitter. So you really want to try to stay um, above the pith and just get the green um, zest. All right. That's about good. Let's go ahead and set this to the side for now. Corner of my board. We can go ahead and just cut this in half. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to put the lid on this. It's going to help it heat up a little faster. All right, so as that's heating up, go ahead and start prepping some of the ingredients for the curry. All right, so let's start off. As we read down here, we have one onion. Actually, you know what? I'm sorry. We're going to start with the chicken. That'll be easier. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab a another cutting board. So I'll cross contaminate my board here. I'm going to put this chicken down. Okay, I'm going to grab a bowl for the chicken, throw that in when we're done. All right, I'm going to use a different knife for the chicken. So, again, up to you at home, it's your own house, but I like to, I'm very conscious of cross contaminating. Uh, raw chicken and veggies. Obviously, all this is going to be cooked together, but I just try to be careful when I when I do things like that. So uh, up to you too. But 
just so I don't have to wash my hands um, too much after this. I'm just going to put on a pair of gloves. And we're just going to cut this chicken into bite-sized pieces. So I have about a pound and a quarter of chicken here, a mixture of thighs and breasts, um, boneless, skinless. Um, it's going to be the easiest way to cook and pretty quickly cook these guys and absorb a lot of flavor without the bones and the skin. All right, so the thighs, again, we're just talking bite-sized pieces, so it's kind of subjective, but I just like to do kind of like little one-inch bite-sized pieces, kind of like that. Pretty quick, just chop it all together, throw it in a bowl, get that ready. So that'll be one ingredient. Sometimes with thighs, especially boneless ones, down here every once in a while, you find like a piece of bone left over, but these feel pretty good, so I'm going to check that. You take this is pretty thick, so what I like to do is uh, this is a little piece of vein here. Um, take the chicken and uh, I like to split it a little bit down the middle here on the breast, especially on the the lobe side that's fatter, and then I can splay it out, and then I'll just cut these into bite-sized pieces. I wanted to know if you're going to add, or if you did add any fat, i.e. butter, to the rice. No, I'm not actually. I'm not. Uh, just some salt in there. I don't usually butter my rice. That's uh, some flavor in there if you want it, or uh, for oil. I don't really add um, oil or butter unless it's for flavor to the rice. But we're going to flavor this one with the, with the lime and the lime zest, and then it's going to be mixed into all this curry. So so much flavor going on that I feel like the oil will get lost. So, yeah, not on this one. All right. So we have our chicken chopped up. Set that to the side. Let me go ahead and uh, get our onion chopped up here. Water's still not quite boiling. So we got our onion. And um, we just want to small dice this guy. So what I like to do is... Uh, for a knife technique, I don't know how much knife work you guys have done here, but uh, when you hold a chef knife, kind of want to grip it by the blade. You don't want to hold it back here. It's not going to have a lot of control back here. So grip it by the blade. You want to use what's called, um, called the bear claw technique or just keep your, keeping your fingertips away. So you want to grab things kind of like this and keeping the fingertips underneath your first knuckle and your thumb behind your fingers. So this way, if I keep it here, I'm never gonna cut anything. A lot of times people get this thumb out here and that's how they get cut. So keep it behind. Take this part, just a little bit of the front of the onion off. I'm gonna take a little bit of this root end off. And then what I could like do is split it straight down the middle of the root. The water's boiling now. Go ahead and turn this down a little bit. Add our rice. Give it a stir. We're going to set a timer for about 12 minutes and then we'll check it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and cover that back up. All right. Someone so, wanted to know how many people the recipe quantity serves. Yeah, so uh, we were talking about that before. Sorry I didn't put that. So um, at home, this is probably going to feed three-ish, maybe four people, um, depending on how big of eaters you are. So somewhere around there. Um, if you're really big eaters, maybe two. So, so uh, with the onion, we split it down the root end. We're going to take like the first layer of the skin off. Sometimes I'll take the second layer off too if I feel like it's too coarse or too, uh, too fibrous because that's not going to break down very well. Um, and some people say, well, how much do you take off? But again, it's just about getting it to the point where um, it's not too, too fibrous um, and it's, it's not, not going to uh, 
affect the eating product. All right, so we got that done. What we want to do is take it this way a couple times. So again, keeping your hand, your fingers behind, and go in one way, and go in again. We'll do the same thing on this side. This one's a little bit thicker, so we'll do this maybe three times. We're trying to get a small dice. Now we've done that way. Now we're going to come back and we're going to go down this way. Okay. Let me just take a look to see how much this is boiling. Turn it down just a little bit more because we want it on a simmer. All right, back to the onion. So we have our cuts this way. Back to this bear claw technique, keeping my thumb behind my fingers with my in my fingertips below my first knuckle. And now I'm just going to go down this way. See that? And that's, that's your small dice. Take these and just kind of run your knife along the edge and finish that up. Same thing this way. We have them that way. We're going to go down vertical. And then across. So that's the small dice of your onion. I'm going to put it in this bowl here, put that to the side, get ready for the next. Okay. So this is, uh, we did advertise this as a demo class, but I know a couple people emailed me and said they were going to cook along. So yeah. If you're cooking along, I'd love to know in the comments. Let me know. Um, not people making, making Monday night dinner out there tonight. but uh, And I'd also be really curious where people are watching from. So I know a lot of our events are reaching people outside of the Burlington, Vermont area. So if you're watching from elsewhere or from Burlington, I would love to know where you're watching from. Thanks. Let us know where you're joining us from. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take Three cloves of garlic, we're going to mince those. So we're going to take a garlic, a head of garlic, take this and just kind of pop down on the top of it, and it'll pop out your garlic that you need. These are kind of small, I might throw an extra one in for, I like garlic. Um, see, that's the thing about cooking too, you think they're small, three cloves, they look small, maybe I'll throw four in, you know, if you like something, put a little more in. If you don't like it, don't put as much in. You know, cooking like this is fun. Uh, it's just about flavor, building flavors. Um, this isn't like baking where it has to be so precise. So sometimes it's about flavor once you have the base going. Um, so you know, we're just gonna pop these because we're mincing this. So I'm just popping down on it, peeling them out of their skins. They pop right out. Okay, those are ready. Now we're gonna mince this guy, these. So. And using that same technique to start, bear claw behind, fingers behind, thumb behind, just running it through a couple times, breaking it down. Now we're going to mince, so I want to put my hand on top of the knife, and I'm kind of going to rock it back and forth. I'm going to get kind of, I'm going back and forth like this. And as you build up speed, you can do that. And we're just going to mince it. Make sure you scrape your knife down. We'll stick there. Run it through a few times so you get it. Consistency you want, and that looks good. So that's a good little minced garlic. We are getting people from all over. This is great. Awesome. St. Louis, Missouri, South Burlington, the UK, Maui, wow. Seattle, Stratford, Ludlow, Mission huh. Viejo, California, Canada, Burlington. Hello, I love everybody. it. This is great. That's, Welcome. This is awesome. So now we're going to do the ginger. So we have one tablespoon of ginger. So peeling ginger, you can take your peeler, you can use a knife, or you can take a spoon 
which is a really cool little trick. And you just kind of scrape down the edge of the ginger. And the thing about the spoon is you can get in these nooks and crannies a little bit. And yeah, really easy. See that? Comes right off. And again, you really can maneuver around the little knobs on the ginger with the spoon. So I need about a tablespoon of this. So I'll probably peel both of these. This guy, I'm gonna break these little knobs off of this one so you probably don't need them. Peeling this. All right, those are done. Easy with the spoon and around all those little knobs, which is cool. All right. Now let's take the top and bottom off because sometimes that can be a little coarse. It's a very thin spot. See, these are the little like coarse spots there. Just throw those away. Sydney, Australia, Los wow. Angeles. <laughs> Everybody's here. Awesome. Great. Put them all over. Yeah, someone said expert knife skills. And <laughs> someone wants to know also, is this a recipe from your restaurant or one that you prepare for your family? Um, well, this is a restaurant that, I mean, a restaurant. This is a recipe that I do at, uh, at a uh, market that I work at that I do cook for dinners. Um, this isn't at the, at the restaurant. Um, so I've done this for pop-ups and I've done this for like to-go meals and I have cooked and I do cook this at home. This is a really good curry. You know, um, it's just as good as most takeout curries, I will say, you know, that I've had. So hopefully you guys agree. I'm giving this just a little stir to check it out. Um, and I'm going to cover it and I'm going to turn this up just a touch. All right, so now we're going to mince the ginger. So you can shred this or you can use your knife. We'll, we'll just go ahead and grate this one. So let's take a little grater. Someone asks if you lose flavor when you freeze fresh ginger. Um, yeah, a little bit, but not not a, not a crazy amount. I mean, there's plenty of um, grocery stores and products. I mean, the market here sells it, a frozen ginger. It's kind of like almost like a little uh, ice cube tray of frozen ginger and garlic, and you just pop it out and use it in your dish. So, you know, um, it's not going to be noticeable unless it's months and months and months old. You know, if it's pretty fresh or frozen within the last month or two or three, it's going to be fine. Great. And then someone else wants to know about your restaurant and your market. They'd like to know more. So um, I'm the owner of a restaurant in Burlington. It's a restaurant and music venue called Nectar's. Um, we're actually not, obviously because of the pandemic, doing is really a lot of music right now. So that place isn't uh, running at full capacity, uh, obviously because of the pandemic. I work at a market, a local natural food market, um, that has like a deli and a butcher shop, and I run the butcher shop and the deli, and we do uh, to-go meals and hot and ready dinners and things like that. All right, so that's about a tablespoon of ginger. I'm gonna say, let's see how good my eye is today. There's a little measure. Uh, little jar right in front of you. You're not that good. I can't see the spoons. I just find too, it's easier to grate out of the freezer. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like cheese, you know, yeah. if you freeze cheese, it's easier to grate. Or meat, grinding meat, you freeze it a little bit, it's easier. So, yeah, it's pretty good. All right. Okay, let's bring the ginger. Check this out. Someone says they appreciate how you talk through everything you do, plus your tips, never assuming that we knew it already. Thank you. I already picked up a couple of tips. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt to repeat. You know, it doesn't hurt to refresh. I always like to, you know, learn again and relearn and make sure I'm doing the right thing. So. I have that, that thing. I mean, no matter how many meals or how many things I cook for someone or give someone, I'm always like, how was that? Was it good? Did you like it? What did you think? You know, I really want the feedback always. Uh, never... Someone has the question if it's okay to use fresh turmeric instead of powder. Yeah, sure. Definitely. I've done that before. 
going to stain your fingers and your yeah, cutting board. <laughs> it's going to grate it, you know, same thing, like, there's beets or whatever, just wear some gloves, but yeah, of course, it's probably going to be a little brighter, a little fresher, you know. Um, just, you know, if you're going to use it, grate it up pretty fine because it can be chunky, and if you get a chunk, it is pretty pungent. Got one minute left on your rice timer. All right, cool. Well, we're looking pretty good anyway. So once that rice comes off, we're going to start the curry. I think we have everything almost done except for the carrot here. So we're going to take, i got three carrots here. So I'll go ahead and I like to just, the way I like to go, okay, put them on the cutting board. Just kind of go down and turn it. It makes it easier. I don't worry about coming across on my finger. So I just do it that way. Your 12 minutes. All right, cool. Check this rice. Looking pretty good. I'm going to give it a quick little test. Okay, that's good. It's just al dente, which means, which is perfect for it to temp come off of the heat, the lid on, it's going to rest for about five minutes, and then it'll be nice and fluffy. Uh, everything should be reincorporated and there'll be nice individual grains. And then we're going to go ahead and mix in all the zest and the lime. Okay. I had two questions that just came in that are very yeah. similar. Sure. It seems there was a run on yellow curry paste at City Market this weekend. I picked up green instead. Is that milder or spicier? And then someone else asked, what's a good substitute for yellow curry paste? I've seen red, but not yellow. So what so, are the differences? So you can use any curry paste basically in this recipe. Some of the reds and the yellow curries, um, excuse me, reds and the green curries, uh, you'll add a, a couple other things, sometimes like lemongrass and kefir lime. Those are the recipes that I use with red and green, um, where the yellow is a little more coconutty and, and, and uh, I don't know, just and that. Gingery. Yeah, gingery, gingery, coconutty. Um, so the green is the spiciest, I find, but it's got that, like, um, Thai heat that's really hot, but then it goes away really quick. Um, the red is kind of the least spicy, in my opinion, and the yellow is in the middle. So that's what I've always done. Uh, the green is the hottest, but again, it goes away quicker than like, it's not like a habanero pepper that's just on your tongue forever. Um, these spices, they, they're there and then they're gone, which I love. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, are you going to compost or save those scraps for vegetable stock? If so, are there any veggies that you wouldn't put in the pot? Well, I wouldn't put ginger in my veggie stock, probably, um, depending on what I was going to use it for. This is going to be compost, um, but I would, you know, depending on what you, some people use skins, some people don't use skins because they find that it might make a stock a little bit bitter. Um, so depending on what you're going to use the stock for, you know, if you're going to use it for cooking, you're going to use it for soup, you're going to use it, you know, it just depends, I guess, on what you're going to use the stock for, if you're going to make a stock or a broth, so. So I'm just going to take the tips off these carrots and we'll shred these guys. I'm going to use the big side of the box grater. And you use tofu instead of chicken. Absolutely. Uh, here's one that we were talking about earlier. Can I make my own curry paste? You can make your own curry paste, but I would recommend making, you know, a good, decent batch of it. It takes a long time, um, and and then you can just slack it out as you need it, you know. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of labor, it's pretty intense to make curry paste just for one little recipe like this. But if you want to, by all means, I've done it, but it's, uh, yeah. Uh, it's not as thick. And then I find this one, this can, the, the uh, Maisri, is, is a really, really good brand. So I'm going to ask, do you always peel your carrots? Not always. Not always. Uh, again, depending on what I'm making. I want this to kind of be... Um, I want this to lend some sweetness to this dish um, to balance out some of the, the curry paste, the spice in the curry. So 
That's why I peel. I don't want the bitter of the carrot. I, I want the sweet to come through on this one. All right, I'm almost ready to start with this guy. We're gonna just roll this lime around. This is our lime for the curry. We'll loosen this up a little bit. Sorry, Ruff. Yeah. Someone says uh, you have a asbestos tongue in terms of your spice tolerance. Oh. You like? And I said, yeah, that's crazy. Spice, spicy foods. Okay. Um, all right, we're going to start with this. I got these two guys. I want to make sure we get these open so I'm not scrambling. Again, mise en place, just getting everything ready so it's easy to cook. This dish, um, the curry, will, you know, it comes together pretty quickly. Um, so this is a, that's a good thing about this dish. It tastes like it takes a while, um, but it, it's, it comes together fairly quick and it's great. All right, look at that guy. Look at this. And again, you don't have to use as much curry. If you can use a tablespoon of curry paste if you want a teaspoon, three, you can use this whole can if you really like spice. So that is something you can um, balance. Again, I put that here on the recipe that you can use more or less depending on your spice tolerance. So that's really up to you. How would you recommend storing the rest of that can if you're not going to use it? Would you freeze it or would you put it in the fridge? I would put this in the fridge. Um, it's going to last for a good while, at least a couple weeks. And um, I would just flip it into like a Tupperware or something or, or another container because the, the rust, if this rusts and it bleeds into the curry, I wouldn't want that. All right, so we'll get this going and turn our burner on. We'll go on medium high. We're going to add our oil, which is about two and a half to three tablespoons. We're going to let that heat up a little bit. All right. Um, I love their red curry paste for like that tofu noodle red curry soup, oh yeah. like Thai Thai or whatever it's called. That their their stuff is so good. The main three brand. Yeah, I don't know if you guys. This is the brand. Maze, it's upside down, but Maisery is the brand. Yeah, the person who asked about making their own is in Canada, so they're not sure if they have that brand, oh. which is why they asked about making their own. Most Asian markets should carry this one. It's pretty common. I think our pan is a 10-inch skillet, I would say. This one is a, it might be a 12. 12 it might be a, it's either a 10 or a 12. This is a, let's see. This is just the largest skillet. <laughs> This is just the largest skillet we have in this kitchen. What is a, what does it say? I think it's a 12 inch. Yeah, I think it's a 12 inch skillet. You can probably use whatever large skillet you have in your kitchen. It doesn't have to be as big as ours. Yeah, you can use um, any skillet. You could also use a pot like you were cooking the rice in. That would work too. I don't want to use this so you guys can kind of see what's happening in the pan here. So we're letting this oil heat up, and then we're going to uh, add the onion, uh, add the onion, and saute that for a little bit, and then we're going to add the chicken and let that start cooking. So one way to check your oil too is put a couple little onions in there, and when those start to go, you can add the rest. Someone said, lots of Asian grocery stores, but still in lockdown here, so only online shopping. Oh, yeah. We're answering all the questions. <laughs> Kathleen wants to know, she feels like she's had chicken and mango curry before. Would you add frozen or thawed if you're going to add mango? Um, I know I've had chicken and mango in Chinese food before. That's really good. You know, you can add it thawed or you can add it frozen, but if you want to add it frozen, just throw it in there and let it thaw a little bit. Uh, you know, I don't know if you want it cooked or you just want to kind of garnish it at the end. I'm not sure how you had it before, if it was like all stewed as part of the curry. All right, so these, um, 
starting to saute here a little, so I'll go ahead and add the rest. So this is our cilantro. And again, if you guys if not, if you don't like cilantro, you don't have to use cilantro. You can use um, basil, it's fine. I like it. And the cilantro generally uses a lot of the stem. Um, adds a lot of flavor. Uh, with parsley, you don't really use the stem. That's kind of a little bit of the difference there. What's funny is that I actually don't like cilantro that much. I have the gene, but I'm getting better at liking it through. Yeah, there's a gene. There. That gene that makes people think it tastes like soap. Yep. It tastes like soap and like stink bugs. <laughs> soap and stink bugs? Yep. Yep. <laughs> like when you, you know, what a stink bug smells like, that's what it tastes like. But I'm getting better at it, especially when it's just in other stuff. Yeah, my wife is the same way where she thinks it tastes like soap, but if it's in something, sometimes she doesn't really know, you know, it's a little bit different. She's not one of those people that showers, you know, like huge handles of it on tacos and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. There's got to be someone out there watching who's got the same thing to back me up. Oh, yeah, the soap thing? Of course. Soap thing. All right, well, our onion is sauteing. What I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, mix this rice up. I'm going to grab a fork so I can fluff it a little bit. Check this out. So that's nice looking, nice and fluffy. Can you see that OK in the yep. camera? So we're gonna go ahead and take our all of our lime zest and put that right in here. And we're gonna take the juice of one whole lime, just can just squeeze that in. You can also take your fork, dig it into the to the lime, and spin it around. That'll really get your juice out. There you go. And then we're just gonna go ahead and give that a good mix. Well, that lime juice, excuse me, lime zest distributed. And that's it. Put this back to the side. Cover that guy back up. It already smells so good in the future considering we just made rice and sauteed onions. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and get these going. Those are getting there. You want to get them translucent. Looking good. Everybody knows what I think we're talking about when I say translucent. You want to make sure you don't want to get a lot of color on them. You don't want them to brown too much, but you want to start to get them soft and breaking down just a little bit. So that's pretty close. I'm gonna say that's good. I'm starting to be able to see through the onions here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add this chicken right in. We're gonna cook this most of the way through. Make sure it's just colored all around. And go for probably about five minutes on this guy. Okay. Someone, clarify, uh, sorry, someone clarified they meant you had an asbestos time when you tried the rice directly out of the pot. It <laughs> was boiling hot and you uh, tried the rice out of the pot. Well, I waited and I blew on it a little bit just to make sure. But yes, I do have a, a high tolerance for heat in my mouth and on my fingers. <laughs> yep. And the curry brand name for the person asking, um, and for anybody else, is Maisry, M-A-E-F-R-I. Yeah. I did put it on the uh, in the recipe too. Um, 
So if you have a copy of that, it is, it is written on there. How are my uh, cook-along people doing? Anybody cooking along? Yeah, I think at least three different people in the comments said that they were cooking along. So how's that going, everybody? Are you doing okay? I know a couple people prepped some stuff ahead of time. Yeah. You. Okay. Sorry, so much clinking and clanking. This burner is a little smaller than the pan, so I'm trying to make sure that all the uh, ingredients are getting heat. Coming along here. And, uh, uh, someone just said, so using basil to replace the cilantro, and yes, you had commented that both basil and Thai basil would work as, as subs, right? Yeah. yeah. That's correct. Either one. Sometimes you just can't find Thai basil. That would probably be the preferable choice for this dish, but sometimes it's difficult to find, so regular basil would be a good substitute and be fine, too. Kathleen says her cooking is going great. Awesome. Someone else said, so far, so good. Cool. Kyle agrees with me and has the genes. Yes. Cilantro <laughs> haters unite. Cilantro genes. And someone wants to know, how do you feel about rehydrated, freeze-dried ginger? I got it for those times I forgot to get fresh from the store. Have you ever I mean, again, it's, it's, it's not going to be as good as fresh, but it'll still give you the flavor you're looking for. It's not going to, you know, hurt anything. It might just not be as fresh and, uh, vibrant as, as as the fresh would be, that's all. And I believe this curry piece, the yellow, has a lot of ginger. Yeah, in it again, already, right? so a lot of these things too, like the ginger, the garlic, um, the onion, it's kind of pick this up a little bit more. Um, it does have some of those things in here, as Carrie said, but I, you know, adding these things, adding some more turmeric and coriander, you're just gonna really bring it up to that level where it's gonna taste like, you know, uh, yeah, just, just gonna taste a lot better, I guess. Yeah. Someone says, great, thank you. You're very clear in your instructions. Any thoughts on fish sauce? Fish sauce, yeah. So I don't add it into this one, but the um, the red and the green curry, I actually usually do put a little bit into it. And um, a lot of times when you make your own curry paste, again, you'll put some fish sauce in it or some of those umami flavors in. When you're using a canned one, it's nice to add some of that fish sauce just for some of that yeah, that umami, that, that really salty brininess. Again, this dish, with this type of curry, we want kind of more sweet play on it, the sweet and spicy, where some of those other ones, I, I tend to add the fish sauce. Someone just says they have a ton of Thai basil in their arrow garden. That's not Perfect. Awesome. Use it up. You got something to use it for now. I love Thai basil. It's so such good. an interesting flavor. I think Thai basil pesto, it's really nice. Put some crushed peppers in there and, and um, some other like aromatics of ginger and, and garlic, awesome. All right, we're getting close here on this chicken. So it's almost, you know, not quite cooked through, but cooked all the way around. Do you have a favorite brand of fish sauce? Uh, no, actually, I don't. I don't even really know a lot of the name brands. I have a couple, because for me, honestly, it lasts so long that I buy one and it just sits there, you know. Um, yeah, nothing in particular. I find something that looks interesting usually at, at one of the Asian markets and, and usually go with that one. I know Red Boat is a real popular Yeah, that one. is a popular one, Red Boat. That's a little more of the... Uh, on the natural side of things, um, not a lot of extra stuff in there, which is great. Yeah, Red Boat, and they have Red Boat 40, I think, is one of the ones. So it's a little, like, extra, and then they have, like, there's, like, one, I don't know if it's Red Boat, but they had one that was, like, Red Boat second press. And it was, like, a second extra. press of the fish oil, so it was, like, really fishy, Real fishy. really deep, yeah. 
Someone says they feel about Thai basil the way I feel about cilantro. It's too licorice-y. There you go. You've got the Thai basil genes. All right, make the world go around. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add the other stuff into here. So we're gonna add the uh, turmeric and coriander, which I have measured out here, and we're gonna add the garlic and the ginger. Okay, and we're just gonna cook that for about a minute so you can really start to smell it. And it starts to open up and, and become fragrant and release and, and wake up, you know? Kathleen would like to know why you recommend a combo of thigh and breast rather than just one. I just like that. I like it. I like it. It's different texture. You get, um, you know, some of the, the thigh that's a, a I just, I, per, it's a personal preference for me. So when I do this recipe, um, I like having the different textures of the different types of chicken. Uh, a lot of people use one or the other, and that's completely fine. So just a personal preference. And someone recommended three crab squid brand fish sauce. What is? So it says three crab squid brand fish sauce. Three so, crab? Yeah. Nice. Good look for that. Thank you. All right, so these are almost... Let's start to smell this stuff. Okay, so now we're going to add the curry paste. And we're going to just go with the three tablespoons. So one, two, three. I'm going to just get that mixed up in here a little bit. So we're going to add the coconut milk and the carrot. We'll go ahead and add some of this carrot. And the coconut milk, this one I like to just, you know, get a, uh, usually a butter knife and just kind of run it around to release all that. So I want to know, um, their chicken isn't cooking as fast as yours. What, what temperature setting do you have? Here? I have it on medium high. Um, yeah, you can just wait and wait, wait till it's cooked. Again, once you put all this liquid in there too, it is going to keep cooking, you know, it probably will cook fine. Once you get all the liquid in there, it starts to cook. So if it's like for you know like 50, 60 percent of the way done, then you can go ahead and start adding your liquid, and it will finish. Because we're going to go ahead and cook this for about five, five or so minutes, so that'll be enough time to finish cooking your chicken. And yes, yeah, so the person that commented on the amount of cilantro, we're going to use a third of a cup in the curry, but then there's also some, we're doing a half cup total that's, as you can see, it says divided, and some of that will go in the rice as well. Uh, next year it's going to be garnished. Garnished, just kidding, not in the rice. So it's just going to be but garnished yeah, at the end for the rice and the curry. Yep. It's going to garnish the whole dish. So yes, we did chop a little bit more than one third cup. Yeah, I just chopped it all up because I'm going to separate it eventually. So I'm going to add, you know, basically, this is a little more than I had said a half cup this is probably more like a cup so i will just divide what i need take out what i need and then use some for garnish so this coconut milk is starting to melt down i'm going to bring this up to a simmer grace would like to know the difference between using coconut milk and coconut cream um coconut cream is very thick you don't have the, as much of the, the liquid in there see how when i open that up and then the cream came out and then all the liquid the cream just basically going to be very very creamy uh so you're not going to have the liquid part of it it's what you need for this dish okay so Get up the temperature. That's looking good. So we've got plenty of time for questions at this point. Like I said, we're doing about aiming for about an hour of cooking and plenty of question time. So if people have other questions about this recipe, questions about cooking tips in general for Chef Jason that you'd like to get his wisdom on, let me know. I'll show you how to plate it up too. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely gonna do that. So once this kind of simmers and really starts to go. I'm going to add the spinach and um, some black pepper. Let that uh, just wilt down and then we'll finish it with the cilantro and the lime juice. And then we'll plate it. Okay. 
smells really good. Yeah, this kitchen smells awesome. This is the point in the, all the cooking classes where I wish people could either have smell vision or be able to pick up dinner somehow because smell it smells awesome in here. Hopefully everybody who's cooking along, it smells awesome in your kitchens too. And maybe everybody who's not cooking along will try this for dinner this week. I hope so. Starting to simmer here. So when it does start to simmer, what you just want to do is um, this tends to start off thicker. So you can really just bring it up to a simmer, let it thicken as much as you want or as little as you want. And then we add this uh, spinach. It will release a little more water into here um, and loosen it up just a touch. Melissa would like to know, what are some other veggies that are traditionally added to Thai dishes that we might use at different seasons from our gardens? Oh, um, snow peas are always in there, eggplant, um, green beans a lot of times in curries, um, you know, carrots always popular, spinach, cilantro. Uh, yeah, this traditionally a lot of the things that you're seeing when you get curry anywhere, but they just use a lot of, a lot of veggies that are available at the time. Sweet potatoes, another one that's always good. Cauliflower goes in there. That's in a lot of Indian curries and things like that. So it's also, you can just use whatever you want. I mean, I throw veggies, you know, whatever veggies I have sometimes in there, zucchini, butternut squash is always really good with curries because it's sweet and you get the spicy. So yeah, whatever you want to kind of throw in there. Yeah, along those lines, someone asked if you could use frozen peas instead of the spinach. Sure. Again, you can use whatever veggies you want. The curry is the base. Everything else is just kind of a, a, a preference. So we're going to use it to flavor everything. Like you asked about the tofu or the chicken. It's going to pick up this curry flavor. And so whatever you put in here is pretty much going to be delicious as far as the, you know, the veggies or the meat or whatever you're going to use to, to absorb some of the curry. So we're going to go ahead and add the spinach now. Someone wanted to know, for the curries where you do use fish sauce, how much do you use and when would you add it? I would add it um, about when we added the carrots and the, when we added the coconut milk and the curry paste, you get all that liquid in there. Let that kind of get together and then add your fish sauce. Um, and I would just start off with like a teaspoon or so, you know, just enough to kind of add some um, umami. But again, it depends on the size of the batch. But for something like this, like a teaspoon maybe. You can always add more. It's hard to take it out. All right, so we're just going to kind of wilt this spinach down. Yes, we are recording this. Um, it takes us a while to get these up onto our website after we record them, just with converting the video and everything. But we will put this up on the website uh, in, at a later date, and I will send out an email to everybody who's signed up through Eventbrite when it's up on the website. They said you're doing a very great job of explaining. Oh, thanks. All right, so you're going to spend on a little bit of black pepper to taste. I'm just going to do like a half a teaspoon or so. that always comes up when you uh, when you teach with us. What are some other meals that you like to cook for you and your family? People like hearing your recipe inspiration for yeah, amazing well, weekday um, meals. You know, last night we did pizza night. <laughs> nice. So I make uh, dough from scratch and then we do a whole thing, you know, a whole pizza night. That was, I like doing that. I love pizza, but I like to make it from scratch. Um, I told you guys about earlier some of the um, the chicken pot pie or the shepherd's pot pie with the cauliflower mash on top. I like to do that. Um, I've been into uh, pork tenderloin lately. I've been doing that about once a week. I've been just taking pork tenderloin. And what I do is I take it, salt and pepper, and I sear it in a cast iron or, a, you know, whatever you have. It's something to get some color on it. Caramelize the outside. And I take it over to, like, uh, some tin foil on a sheet pan. I put it on the tin foil. I rub the outside with herbs and garlic, like um, I usually just like sage, thyme, oregano, basil, whatever herbs. 
and fresh garlic, and I rub the outside with that, and I take a few pats of butter on top, and then I, like, and I wrap it up in the foil and put it in the oven for at like 350 for like 20 minutes, so it's about 145, and then slice it and then dump the stuff in the foil over it. It's been so good. I've been doing that once a week, so that's one I've been into recently. It's easy, quick, and it's just so delicious. Nice. Here, that's a couple. Someone says they have smell aroma. My husband is outside the door in the kitchen searing beef chunks to can. My poor brain is having trouble justifying the smell and what I'm seeing. That's <laughs> awesome. So it's like smell of vision, but not quite right. That's right. And someone else wants to know more details about the market that you work. Where is it located and how can they come find you? Let's see if I can. You can. Say. I don't care. Okay. I work at a Sweet Clover Market. It's in um, Essex Junction in the, uh, in the shopping center out there, the Essex Experience. Um, so that's where it is. Great. Someone said tofu or chicken and eggplant. Yes, eggplant. I love eggplant. Eggplant's yeah. going to absorb so much of everything you're doing. So this is looking really good. We're, all, we're basically going to finish this dish now. So I'm just going to turn it down. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the um, part of that cilantro, put that in here. I'm going to squeeze this other lime in here. Someone commented they made your arroz con pollo and it was delicious. Oh, it's awesome. We have a repeat customer. Thanks. Yeah, the arroz con pollo live stream is on our website. Yeah, um, that's on the website now, right? Check that out. That recording is up at this point. Yeah, I think I have a couple up there now. I have the arroz con pollo class, and I think my um, sausage biscuits and gravy class is up there. And that one, we made biscuits from scratch and the sausage from scratch. And that was fun. Okay, so this is done. We'll see if it's done. I'll taste it. We'll see about that. Let's see how we did. Okay. It's good. Mm -hmm. That's a winner. Okay. So turn it off, and we'll go ahead and plate one up for you guys. We are going to be on almost exactly perfect timing. It is 627. How about that? Look at that. I'm going to take this off the heat just so it doesn't keep cooking. I'm just going to swap some stuff around here very quickly. All right, bring the rice back over here. The way I like to plate this up is get a plate or a bowl, however you guys want to do it, but I think you'll be able to see it a little better with the plate. Take a little bit of rice, Get that on the plate. It's good curry. Get to make sure you get like a good amount of the, the chunks and the stuff. That on there. Take some sauce. That. And we'll just go ahead and finish it with a little bit of that fresh cilantro. And that's it. Awesome. Look at that. It looks so good. And like again, it smells so good in this kitchen. I'm so excited to eat dinner. Um, I'll leave the chat open for just a little bit longer if people have other questions they want to submit. Otherwise, thank you to everybody for watching. I will send out a survey link sometime tomorrow afternoon. I'd love to know your thoughts on the class and ideas for other live stream classes that you'd like to see from us. Um, thanks again for everybody who tuned in. It's so great, again, to have this sense of community with you know, people all over the world. That's awesome, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, I posted the link to our recorded classes in the chat at citymarket.coop slash virtual classes. So you can check all those out from other ones from Chef Jason and other instructors. And like I said, we'll work our hardest on getting this up in a timely manner. Um, yeah, thank you all so, so much. If there's any other questions, go ahead and put them into the chat. I'll leave it open for just another minute or so in case people are frantically typing. But mm -hmm. Someone just says, looks like, looks delicious. Can't wait to plate and try mine. Thank you so much. Oh, thank great. you guys. I really thank appreciate you. it. It's nice to have, like, carries it. So many people from so many different places. That's really, really great. 
Bravo, Chef. Thank you. Amazing. No Thank you guys for joining. Awesome. I really appreciate it. Going, everyone's going to try it soon. So people that weren't cooking along today are definitely going to try it again. Great. Awesome. Yeah, quick and easy, too. And you'll be surprised with how delicious this is. As Someone far says, as... I didn't catch when the carrots went in. The carrots went in at the same time as like the curry paste and the coconut milk, Correct. those liquids. It's uh, step number four on the recipe. Cinemarket.coop slash virtual classes. And I put it in the chat box as well. Everybody's saying thank you. That's wonderful. That's where that video for the biscuit making is and mm -hmm. the roast compoyo. Those are all up there. People cooking along saying theirs taste great. Here oh, great. Great. It says aloha. <laughs> aloha. Thank you. Mahalo. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and end the event then. Thank you, everybody, so much and enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.